Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today I have a very special guest, Dr. Kumar, who's going to tell us all about the wonderful field of cardiology as, as well as how she got to that point and some advice for you all, especially um, INGs and international medical graduates. She's going to give us some advice about what you can do to kind of stand out to get into a U.S. residency and her thoughts on uh, her medical school uh, experience there. I want to welcome Dr. Kumar. Uh, thank you so much for coming on today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Antonio. Uh, so my name is Dr. Tishangi Kumar. I'm um, I'm a first year general cardiology fellow at uh, Carilion Clinic, Virginia Tech University. Um, so I my story is I was uh, I was born in Benghazi, Libya. I grew up in Dubai. I completed my high school and uh, I also did uh, my diploma in. Uh, music before I left Dubai. I then pursued my college at University of Toronto. Um, I majored in physics and mathematics. I did my medicine out at Ross University School of Medicine in Dominica. Then I did my residency at Washington Hospital Center, Georgetown University. After completing that, um, I did about six months of locums hospitalist up in Maine. Then I did a year of Heart Failure Transplant Fellowship at uh, University of Cincinnati, and um, then I uh, then I just started my general cardiology fellowship at uh, Curling and Clinic. Awesome! So, awesome. so in my first six months. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, and you, you you spoke about going to Ross University. Uh, what are your thoughts? I'm going to get straight to the point. What are your thoughts on going to a international medical school? Because I get a, have a lot of students who ask me whether they should apply to it or reapply to a U.S. school. What, what are your thoughts on that? So I think, you know, going to an international medical school, um, it is not uh, the ideal situation, mm -hmm. um, but I, I also think that if you have the opportunity to go, then, and you're, you're not one to wait, um, then, I say go for it, um, but again, go to um, a school where you research and you know you're going to get good rotation in the U.S. once yes. you are done your basic science training, um, because that essentially will help you get your residency. Gotcha. That's that's the, the crucial the crucial aspect. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what would you say some downsides of going to an international medical school? Or I know you mentioned. Um, trouble getting into maybe it's a little bit harder to get into a u.s residency but you kind of proved to that that you know you can become a cardiologist and be very successful um what, what do you say some other downsides to going to international medical school i think the the biggest the the downside is the the bias that exists yeah. you know um when you do apply for residency and when you do apply for fellowship um just having that on your resume is sort of puts you in the second tier of being looked at gotcha. uh, so especially if it's not a well-known school mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think that's the biggest downside um, because you know they don't they don't know the kind of rotations you're going to so I think um, it's just that filtering process and yeah. the and I, and I think that's that's the hardest thing to get get past. Yeah. So, w what are some tips that you can have that you would give for medical students who are uh, interested in going to international medical school or currently there, so they can get into a U.S. residency? What kind of tips would you give them? So, I think um, if you are in an international, you know, school and you are looking for rotations, make sure that the rotations you're going to are mm -hmm. at academic institutions so okay. you're rotating with um, residents interns other medical students uh, because that gives your um, application a lot of weightage and that gives your gives you a very good experience yeah uh, so i think that's that's key and you know i if you can try to do some research during that time um but i think you know research can be secondary that's you know, if you can do it, it's great. It always looks great. 
Gotcha. And what about the students who are maybe a year or two out of medical school from an international medical school trying to get into a U.S. residency? Does that make it a lot harder to get into? Is it impossible if you're maybe two or three years out? It's not impossible. I, I don't believe anything anything is impossible. Gotcha. Um, I think that, you know, if if you really want something, you'll yeah. do whatever it takes to get it. Okay. So I think, you know, perseverance is, is key. Um, yeah. So I think if you are interested in cardiology, do the research, you know, uh, get get with a mentor um, who's, you know, proactive in publishing and do some basic science research. That always looks great. You know, these are projects that take long, but um, uh, you get good um, information out of it and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're making a significant contribution. So um, I think research is key. Um, there, I myself did a pre-cardiology fellowship, yeah. um, which is another thing that, you know, um, international medical graduates, are, there's something to, you know, consider. There are not that many, um, you know, in, in the country per se, because, um, and they don't, usually they don't take more than one yeah. uh, fellow in, in a pre-cardiology fellowship um, so that's another thing to do uh, to boost your resume boost your experience in the field itself and to show that you're enthusiastic and this is something that you really want gotcha um, and speaking about the field of cardiology um, what made you decide to go down that path uh, what was it about cardiology Oh, so my, my, my story is a little bit different and, you know, uh, I was very interested in cardiology very early on um, in my career. So I think it's all stemmed from when I was um, in college. I, um, I, ha I was studying physics and mathematics, as I, um, as I mentioned, and, I, and I'd also done my diploma in music. Mm -hmm. So my journey through medicine um, sort of tied in music, physics, mathematics um, that um, interested me in cardiology. Now how that comes about is how I think about it is, you know, for me, when I was studying music, you know, I start, studied precision of sounds and, um, the, and I find it analogous to heart sounds. And, um, you know, it's so important in diagnosing valvular abnormalities. Um, and um, secondly, with physics and mathematics, I study the cardiovascular system from a physics aspect. So taking something so organic and describing it into mathematical models. Uh, for me, you know, these skills sort of gave me a very deeper understanding of physiology in itself. Um, and it and it helped me in, in my um, clinical assessment skills. Gotcha. Um, what I love about cardiology the most and what fascinates me is, you know, sim very simple skills like good history, good physical, um, can really, uh, uh, you know, uh, track your clinical judgment. Like, and, and then it, you pers pursue other forms of um, um, diagnostic modalities like EKGs, echoes. Um, so, and for me, what what I thrive on is teaching and learning while working in a multidisciplinary environment. And for me, that's what cardiology gave me. Gotcha. So, um, so to become a cardiologist, you have to do four years of medical school and then three to four years of internal medicine and then additional three years of cardiology fellowship. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And what, what is, can you describe like a typical day for you? Um, what time does it usually start? What time does it usually end? I know it probably varies, but. It varies month to month. Um, yeah. But um, I would say, you know, bread and butter of cardiology is uh, defined by our service month. Yeah. And our service months are when we are on the inpatient and um, consult service. Yeah. So, you know, as a fellow, I get there by 6.30 in the morning. I pick up, my, um, I quickly review my list. Mm -hmm. I make, I jot down a few notes. 7 a.m., I pick up, sign out any uh, new patients that were admitted overnight. Mm -hmm. Any critical patients that I think need to be get, uh, need to be seen sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go and eyeball them, 
Um, and if there are any quick decisions that need to be made, such as patient needs to go to the cath lab, patient needs an echo, I try to get their consents done. Mm -hmm. And then I meet my residents around 7.30, quarter to 8, mm -hmm. run the list with them very quickly. 8 a.m., we meet with our attending. We do table rounds for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, and then we start going and seeing our patients physically. Um, my pager goes on at 7 a.m. So that means any admissions that come in through the ER, um, I'll be paged. So if I hear that a patient is critically ill and needs to be seen sooner, then I'll break away from rounds and I go take care of that while the team continues to round. Gotcha. And then I catch up with them at some point in time. Um, we try to finish our rounds by noon. Um, we try to do some teaching while we're, we're doing rounds. So that's why rounds take a little bit longer. Gotcha. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, the, the residents will work on their discharge and, um, you know, putting in some orders, et cetera. Any new admissions that come in, then, you know, we split them up and we try to see them as much as we can. Um, we try to finish our admissions and tuck everybody in by about four. Mm -hmm. We regroup as a team. We run the list very quickly. We do a mini didactic. Um, and then about 4.30, I'll break away. And we usually have conference for the fellows. Um, so 4.30 to 5.30, we either have echo conference or some kind of academic um, teaching. And then we typically are done by 5.30, unless we're on call. <laughs> then then yeah. call is a different story. <laughs> okay, and for the people who don't know what a cardiologist is, uh, can you kind of briefly explain what is a cardiologist and what type of patients do you normally see? So cardiologist, um, you know, I, I get this question a lot. It's like, yeah. oh, so you, you know, you don't do surgery? And I say, no, I don't do surgery. They're like, what do you do then? <laughs> so um, as a cardiologist, you know, we are, um, what we do is we diagnose um, cardiac conditions. We manage all the cardiac conditions. We don't do any surgical interventions. The surgery is reserved for cardiothoracic surgery. Mm -hmm. um, the only procedural things that we do as cardiologists are um, either putting in pacemakers, um, you know, interventional cardiology, which is um, your PCIs, um, cardiac, and you know, uh, with stenting, uh, angioplasties, um, and then uh, those are the only procedure. But that is again reserved for the sub um, specialists of cardiologists. Right. Um, what, as a general cardiologist, you know, um, in in terms of diagnosing, we um, use things like your EKGs, echoes. So we're able to perform the echocardiograms. We're about uh, we're able to obviously interpret them. Yeah. Um, all the cardiac stress testing is done by us, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, management of these patients. Gotcha. Um, so, so when a patient comes in with a heart attack, you're the the doctor that's taking care of them, or any other right. conditions. Got you. Okay, awesome. Um, and once you're done with all your training, how much can a cardiologist, on average, make out of uh, fellowship? What, what what is a typical salary for a cardiologist? I think it uh, I think it depends on the region that you practice and the mm -hmm. form of practice that you do. If you go into academic practice, it's a little bit less than going into private practice. Um, uh, in academia, as a new as a new cardiologist, you can um, typically expect about three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it can go up as high as five hundred. Yeah. Okay. And going back to um, speaking about IMGs, um, any other advice that you would have? Because I, like I said, the number one question that I get is a lot of students, they want to know how they can get into a U.S. residency. And I know you mentioned um, like doing well in your rotations and doing research. Any other advice you would have for those students? I think um, the biggest advice that I got, and I got this from my dad, yeah. Um, and I and I always say hold it very true to me is you know always be kind, always mm -hmm. be humble, always yeah. be curious, always ask yourself why, and always and there is no such thing as a stupid question. Definitely. Always 
show your enthusiasm and show that you care about the patient. It's right. always about the patient first. And I think if you hold that true to yourself, um, your talent will be recognized. You know? Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank you for uh, coming and joining me and, and telling us your really inspirational story. Um, I do have three last questions. I try to ask everyone these last three questions. Uh, you can just give one to two word uh, answers. Uh, what is your favorite food? Ooh, uh, my mom's food. <laughs> she makes this chickpea curry. That's my favorite. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, what is your favorite heart condition? My favorite heart condition is heart failure. Heart failure, awesome. And what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Dance. Dance, awesome. Well, Dr. Kumar, I'd like to thank you for uh, <laughs> joining me today. Your story is really inspirational. It's going to inspire a lot of people out there. Um, I'd like to thank you and enjoy the rest of your vacation in Dubai. And for everyone else. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. For everyone else, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time.